Hi everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Bison video blog from our brand new Palatial Studios. What a town, huh? huh? What How a town. about that? Just for you, they've moved us now to the penthouse. We it's... were in the outhouse. I remember that we were doing that in the WDAY <laughs> studios about two years ago. And now look what we've got for you. Never been Just allowed on this floor, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving up to the big time. Uh, we are a day away from signing day. We'll get to that uh, plenty in a moment. First off, the Bison men's basketball team will return to national TV for the first time, Jeffrey, in three years, as they were announced yesterday in the Bracket Buster series that they'll get the zips from Akron on February the 22nd on ESPN2. What do you make of this? Well, Michael? as we're looking at some zip, Zips video here, a pretty good team. I've won 13 straight yep. longest active streak in Division I basketball. Great test for NDSU. This is what the Bracket Buster is all Absolutely. about. I love this format. It's too bad they're canceling it yeah. after this year because it just gives you a different look, a different feel for what's out there across the country. You look at the big fellow for Akron. We're featuring him at Zeke Marshall, seven-footer, who's second in the NCAA in field goal percentage behind Marshall Bjorklund. So that's obviously matchup 1A. And you mentioned the fact that this is going away. The Missouri Valley has controlled this for the last couple of years. And the Valley has stated, since now the Colonial's not involved in it, they don't want to do this anymore because they feel it hurts their RPI and their chance of getting more at-large teams in because if they don't win the game, there's a good chance they're left out of the dance. So they're the party wreckers. Huh? Evident that's it. I'm drawing some conclusions there, but I believe so. Yes, they're well, the party that's wreckers. That's too here. bad. It, it is. Again, uh, I think the, the MAC and the Summit, it's great for the Summit. Because no doubt. There's they're a, never on TV. It's a league that's, uh, I think, undervalued in the last couple of years. Yeah. It's had some of the top scores across the country. There's going to be great guard matchups in this uh, bracket buster, too, of South Dakota State's Nate Wolfers, yeah. you know, in his matchup. It's just... Uh, uh, it just it's, it's nice break from the grueling right. week to week uh, tussle of the conference play. And also SDSU gets a TV game you mentioned at Murray State, which is a team that won an NCAA tournament game uh, last year. So that's pretty good pub. The, the Summit getting two nationally televised games. Now, obviously, the biggest thing is for the Summit League to finally win a tournament game. They haven't done that since 2005, and I don't know if this is the year that's going to end it, but at least to get these guys out there to see a Marshall Bjorkland, to see a Trayvon Wright. Obviously, Taylor Braun probably will not be back by the Bracket Buster game, but to get NDSU out there, this hasn't happened on ESPN2 since the Summit League championship game. I asked Saul Phillips the advantage of being on ESPN2. Yeah. You just think maybe, because we see ESPN2 every day, yeah. that it's not a, maybe a big deal to us, but to those coaches, number one recruiting. An email went out today to all the recruits saying, hey, don't forget, yep. check us out. Mm -hmm. We're going to be on ESPN2. And two, it's another just a fact of national exposure. Yep. You know, we talked about on your radio show last night, you and I, that uh, I think people across the country are geographically stupid. <laughs> There's nothing else to follow no, it up with. No. I would agree with you, but I could, because there's just part of the country that, A, I don't know how many that know there's Division One basketball that's played in North and South Dakota, period. And they've been doing it for seven, eight years now. I have to wonder what these people are teaching in these fourth graders. Don't you know the lower 48 <laughs> when you're Probably in fourth not. grade? Now, I do know some math. The Bison have played five games since Taylor Braun went down. They are three and two. Uh, two of those, the three of those games were on the road at IUPUI, at Western Illinois, at South Dakota State. They have two more this coming weekend at Oakland and at Fort Wayne. Oakland has been a house of horrors for NDSU. Ben Woodside's team's never even won there. No, it's the old arena. Yeah. It's uh, one of those arenas I haven't been to. We've been to, uh, uh, Kevin Schneff has been there. But it, it's an okay place. It's pretty good home court advantage. No and the fact that NDSU has Taylor, or I mean Trayvon right back, uh, is going to help them. That was scary there for a while no in doubt. South Dakota State. Yep. That not only Braun could, is out, but maybe uh, Trayvon, he's back. And he looked his normal self this past there weekend, you yep. know, against Kansas City and against South Dakota. Uh, the Bison defense, Jeff, is something that needs to be remarked about. They allowed 34 points in a game against Kansas City. And then in the high 40s against South Dakota, that's the biggest reason in my mind why this team has a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. They play defense ferociously. I asked SDSU head coach Scott Nagy after the Bison game. SDSU has went through a lot of injury problems mm -hmm. before the last couple of years. They had some funky stuff happen to them. I said, how do you get through it? And he said, defense. You know, you have to come back. You have to play good defense. What does NDSU do? Their Man. next two games, yeah. best two defensive efforts of the season. Now, as we get into the stretch run here, NDSU, Western Illinois, SDSU, all 9-2. and two. Western still has to make the Dakotas trip. Here on February 5th, who's going to be the Summit League regular season champ? You want to make a prediction on that yet? Oh, just because I'm the pick'em champ. You are the pick'em champ. Uh, <laughs> There's seven games to go in the conference. I'm going to make a bold prediction. There's going to be a two-way tie. Mm. I think Western Illinois making this trip is going to be a big uh, hurdle for them. Yeah, um, yeah at least a two-way tie, NDSU, SDSU. 
How's that? Yeah, way to ride the fence there. Good oh, work on that. Oh. I, luckily, we won't stick your feet to the fire on that <laughs> one. As I mentioned off the top, huge day tomorrow for NDSU football and across the nation. It's signing day where high schoolers will make their uh, commitments. They'll sign on the dotted line, the fax machines. I still can't believe they use fax machines on uh, here in 2013, <laughs> but that's the way it's going to be. NDSU, as we tape this, has 20 uh, verbal commitments. They were hoping to get to between uh, 18 and 20 is what Craig Bull said. They've added three more walk-ons as well. Uh, we'll get to the actual uh, signings in a second, but first, as we tape this today, NDSU has lost two guys from the 2012 class, both from the state of Arizona. Marcus Brantley, a cornerback, and Chuk Samichi, a defensive end, both dismissed from the team uh, for rules violations. And these are two guys, I'm not sure that we're going to be huge con uh, contribution guys in 2013, but they're definitely we wanted to see them in spring football. Yeah, rules violation. You know, I think it's a collection of just immature stuff over time mm -hmm. with these two guys I don't think it's either any one event that happened to you know for their dismissal it's just amazing you know you recruit these guys but you can't make them grow up you know you recruit yeah. them on potential they're high school seniors they're 18 some guys make it some guys find that maturity you know what you don't win with immature guys in college football you just don't so if they're not if they don't uh, you know measure up to snuff then you get rid of them I think you're better off in the long run, yeah. to not have that around. You look and at it the, amazes yeah. me, excuse me, it yeah. amazes me, I say this every year, that a college education is, what, 16000 a year now? Easy. About that, yeah. That's a lot of money, isn't no it? No doubt. I'm still paying my loans yeah. off. I've been out of school for 10 years. And so. I saw Oswego State, <laughs> yes. too. We're, I no, mean, we're not Division One. <laughs> yeah, it just, uh, it's amazing that the a lack of focus on, yeah. on what that is worth in the long run. Now, when you look at that, to, to your point, the 2009 team was beset by guys that were kicked off the team, and I think there was a real culture change in 2010, so we're not going to have this anymore. And I think that maturity factor is a huge thing of what you just said, that that, was, that wasn't going to be, and I think it's the biggest reason why they had the success they've had over the last three years. You don't make it to Frisco screwing around. No. Now, as we tape, as I mentioned, uh, there's 20 guys that have verbaled. Uh, surprisingly, only two out of, uh, three out of Minnesota, two out of North Dakota. The biggest state is Wisconsin with six, and we heard that the Badger State had a tremendous uh, high school depth this season, and NDSU has exploited that to a big degree. I talked to the head coach of Menominee this, uh, this morning, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, and you have Wisconsin in that state, and you have nobody else other than a bunch Division of Division one wise, yep. yep. And you get guys like James Gates, who the linebacker from mm -hmm. Menominee offered as preferred walk-on, means you have to pay your own way, or the decision is to get a scholarship offer from the FCS school like NDSU. NDSU uh, hit the hit the uh, state hard. Yeah, I did. And I think you go after that, okay, here's the choice. You can pay your own way, and maybe you'll make it at Wisconsin, and Wisconsin's done well in the preferred walk-on. They've done that well. It's yeah. like, much like Nebraska. Yep. Or you could say, uh, uh, this is a program that's won. Uh, maybe we'll pay a lot of your education, and you can Get come a and maybe a, chance, yeah. a better chance to play right away. Grant Morgan out of Oshkosh, Alex Hahn out of Oak Creek. Brad Ambrosius is one that I'm really excited to see. He's a 6'5 defensive end out of De Pere. Then they also got Nick Jacobson, the defensive tackle out of Prescott. And the big one that I think everybody was interested in was Nathan Tangway, uh, also out of Wisconsin. He had some FBS offers, as did Jacobson, who had an offer from Pitt, and he chose NDSU rather than go to play for the Panthers. Yeah, I think one of these guys or two of these guys may have a chance to play right away, yeah. although you gotta, you got to remember it's going to be in a backup role next year because NDSU right, will be stacked have. with three turners. What do you look for? You look for a need. Where is the need? There's going to be a need at linebacker. No doubt. It could be a need now at the end yep. as, a, as a backup player. I don't know if any of the offensive players will play right away, but um, defensive players, if you're physically uh, capable, and I think the uh, Jakeswin's kid looks like he's yeah. physically ready to play, yeah. um, maybe there's a chance. How about Florida? The, the NDSU gets three guys out of the Sunshine State. I want to recruit Florida. Uh, right, wouldn't you? I'd love to go there this time of year, but that's the first time since my six years of covering Bison football that the Bison have, have made a concerted effort to go down there. They've gotten a couple of guys. Brendan Pierre comes to mind. Josh Gatlin a couple years ago through the way of uh, NDSCS, but uh, they hit Arizona a couple years ago, and now they've branched out to Florida. What well, do you make of that? Connor Wentz is a cousin of, yep. um, of Carson Wentz, yep. so there was a nice connection there. And the other two guys, Chris Board, a safety, I don't know really much about him. Trey Dempsey, NDSU needed a corner. Yeah. Uh, he comes from a great program. Lakeland High is a two-time national champion. <laughs> and he also has all the same uh, height, weight, that a certain guy who's an All-American at corner he's from the Bison He needs to gain right a few now. pounds, but yeah, yeah he's, he, uh, he's... Very similar to Marcus Williams. Are you in putting that. him into Marcus Williams' I'm not Williams saying count? that. I'm just saying he has the same attributes. You're guilty of all this hype <laughs> I, as anybody I am. else. I'm the guy, so you can blame me on that. There's a couple of guys I think that could really be standouts uh, in this class. Zach Zemer comes right to mind, the big offensive lineman out of Lakeville North who played uh, in the 6A championship game this past year uh, against Eden Prairie. Uh, talking to his coach, 
he told me that he could play right away. Now, granted, no lineman ever plays right away. Zach Johnson was the only uh, guy who was, and that was because NDSU was uh, needed that this past year, the kid out of Eastview for this past season. I think he can play right away. And then Kevin Feeney's kid out of Moorhead uh, and Chase Morlock, Jeff, I think he's a beast, and I think he could play right away next year as well. Where at? Linebacker? I, if you're asking me right now, I'd say linebacker. Oh, here we see him running the ball. He's a pretty good runner, too. Yeah, and, uh, he's very good. It's good to get that local kid. He's the number one local recruit by yes. far, like I said, and it's good for NDSU to get a kid from Moorhead. I think a kid of a lot of potentials, Austin Cooner from Sioux Falls. Yeah. He's a big offensive lineman, and he was 17 years old when he verbaled. Cole Davis is the quarterback that NDSU gets out of this class. Craig Bull came in and told us last spring we're going to get a quarterback in every class, knowing full well that Brock still has his senior year to go. Then you have Carson Wentz, who has two years, and Derek McGinnis, who has three years uh, after that. But Davis, and I mean, you and I both talked to his high school coach, has all the prototypical uh, attributes you want in a quarterback. He's big, he's strong, yeah. but he's going to have to wait his time. And I think there's a uh, situation where you have to tell a kid that, you know what, if you want to be in a good program, no matter where you go, mm -hmm. you're going to have to probably wait your turn. NDSU has one running back. That's Morlock. And we're not convinced he will play running back. That concern you at all? Not at the moment. You have two guys coming back who are the starters. I think uh, Darius Anderson has a lot of potential. The red shirt. Yep. You still have Matt Jones if he comes back from his concussion Derek issues, Lang and is Derek too. Lang. There's there's enough players there. But that's I guess maybe the one concern. NDSU did grab three tight ends. It always seems they get tight ends. Tight ends slash fullbacks. Right? Well, a lot of teams run that spread, and, and there's not a need for those guys. Yeah. I think. Uh, uh, NDSU has a recruiting advantage with that position. Well, there you have it, folks. We'll be busy tomorrow. Jeff and I covering signing day. Craig Bull will join myself on WDAY 6 He's not coming tomorrow here. Night. He's not coming here. He'll be joining me live on TV tomorrow night uh, to break down signing day as NDSU hopes to get all these guys signed on the dotted line. And then we're back next week to break it down and get you ready for another big basketball weekend. Western Illinois comes to town next week for the big Bison. Game. And that should be fun. For Jeff Colfack, I'm Don Mizzo. And our lovely TV studios here. This is the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog.